Good morning, everyone. It's August 8th, and it's not quite as scorchingly hot as it has been the past two weeks here in North Carolina. Um, my name is Jolene Dodge, and I have a website, jolenecreates.com. I'm also on YouTube, and we do glaze kiln openings. This time, we have doing a little bit different. Um, some of the viewers were so kind to leave uh, constructive uh, thoughts and ideas and they wanted to see the pieces longer. I'm going to try and focus on that and not as much time moving furniture around. So let's get right into it. The, one of the things I did this particular glaze opening was the last one I found a new glaze um, that is an equivalent to ancient copper from Amico. This is not from, um, this is the Amico mm -hmm. and then this is Kentucky Mudworks Inferno Red. This was at a cone five, and we all know that ancient copper likes it pretty hot, so obviously it wasn't quite as hot as it should be. I ran my kiln to a true cone six, which is what this is, and I'm about to show you some of those results. Here we go. Okay, so the first one, <clears throat> which in my opinion came out the very best, and um, I'm going to show you what I was aiming for and what I got. So um, I hope you can see all those micro crystals. They're just absolutely gorgeous. This is uh, winter wood, and you can see how now we're coming in here. Even the inside has some really lovely um, micro crystals. There. That's what I was shooting for, and um, I think uh, my results are even just a little bit better. It's the only one that's better, but I really am very, very pleased with this. Uh, so in this case, it came out gorgeous. I'll show you the rest. Okay, so in the next case, <clears throat> not so much. Um, where'd it go? <clears throat> no, okay. Oh, here it is. Okay, so I was shooting for this. <clears throat> I have a frog on my throat. I'm so sorry. Um, the very bottom is very pretty. I liked that. That came out nice. This is snow and um, from Amico, and I'm really just not that impressed. I mean, it's okay. It looks quite green. I don't know if you can see the green to it. Um, there's those micro crystals again, which I'm very pleased with, and it does have a nice sheen, but maybe I should have left it up higher. The picture is lower see as you can see there i just make my notes on the side when i'm aiming for something so that's inferno red with amico's snow on top here we go <clears throat> i'm gonna grab a little drink and see if that'll help my throat <coughs> excuse me not so much of all of the not successes um i was going for this and that's textured turquoise and, in that case, Amico's uh, ancient copper. So I don't know why it did this. There's, uh, the textured turquoise took over everything. I mean, it just all ran together in one huge mush. It's not bad. It's just not very pretty. So i um, not sure about that one, that combination. I'll have to repeat that again. Uh this one, again, I didn't have textured turquoise, and I used a Western Autumn, it's called, and it was really runny, and it killed all my texture. Um, the copper looks pretty good. I mean, let me go a little slower so you can see. On the handle, I think it's quite the brightest there. Um, there's those really nice micro crystals. I'm liking this glaze a lot. I just wish it was even a little bit more coppery than it is brown. And I'm gonna have to find out, like for instance, on the handle, it has more of that orangey look I'm looking for. Um, whereas there, it's quite brown. So I wonder if it, I wonder if three, four coats are better or are two coats best? I'm going to have to do a couple of more test pieces before I, 
I'm making pumpkins right now, and I plan on firing them with ancient cup, this Inferno Red. This is another one I think really, really came out nice, in my opinion. I mean, it's just, I love all those micro crystals. They look really nice to me. And um, the inside's quite pretty. Don't know if, is it catching the light there? Can you see yeah. if it's catching the light? So. Good. That looks pretty nice, pretty nice. And I like how the blue, and I think that's seaweed. So very pretty. I, th I think that has a nice little oomph to it. So that was it for the ancient uh, copper versus inferno red. Um, these are a few of my other new tries. This is a new try. This is um, Norse blue sponged on. You can see that sponging pattern with the uh, celadon bloom on top and then just a nice white liner inside. I thought that came out really nice. It's, it's, uh, I like the textural look to it. And you can, the crystals show up some, but not outstandingly so, in a way that I think is subtle and nice. Go a little bit slower so you can catch those crystals. There's a crystal, there, there. And then I like that whole uh, textury pattern of sponging. Um, this is a Mako technique, and uh, unfortunately, it's stuck on the kiln shelf um, because I refired it. Uh, what had happened was when I fired this originally, it fell off the cookie and uh, touched the kiln shelf. So I had to refire it and do it over again. And as you can see, it's stuck to the kiln, even though I cookied it, the cookie caught it. So uh, what this is, is they call it Cascades Plop. That's what they call it. So underneath, this is just a celadon. This is a uh, stroke and coat, my blue haven. And then on top, all along the top here, you do plops, like thick plops of cascade white. And then you get this really pretty runny looking thing. And then I had the saucer to match. So this won't sit well. So because of the, I have to do that off. But I think that's really quite pretty. I think it looks really nice together. Can you see that pretty good? I hope so. I like that, that came out nice. Cascades plop. <laughs> Um, these are some more of my favorites. I run these quite a bit because I just love this combination combination of birch and cordovan, and I think it's lovely. This is with flux. You can see, you can see the flux drags it a little more, makes more of the brown break. I almost think that I actually prefer it with no flux. I'm gonna try it with no flux next time because I think this is a little bit more running for such a short piece. I, I've lost some of the beauty of the colors mixed together that they do on their own. The um, side dish is really pretty little saucer. I thought that came out nice too. I don't put it on a flat surface. The movement isn't nice. Um, so I just leave the plain birch. It's just my personal taste. I think that looks quite nice. There you go. Uh, again, another one of the uh, cordovan and uh, birch, and it's just a little jar. I did not fire them together, so of course they don't sit perfect. I hate leaving that raw, but I'm going to have to start doing that. So the exterior, you can see where I've applied a little bit of the flux. We'll go just a teeny bit slower. I love all the purple that breaks in there, and it's just a lovely combination. It always sells really well too so really pretty piece probably going to end up being mine with that wonky lid so um this is a refire i had this out in another um kill mode and i hated how that looked so what i did was i refired it with flux on top to give it all this little pattern and there's the back so it, it came out fine. It, it's still not exactly what I was aiming for. I really wanted it to be lighter like this the whole side. But back to the drawing board, we'll see. Mm -hmm. um, this is one of my favorite glazes, and you can see the glassiness of the porcelain. This is Coda um, from Kentucky Mudworks. I'm trying to learn to throw with it. It gives it a beautiful glassy body, so the raw clay looks just gorgeous and is nice to touch. And I love the great big drips. This, to me, sometimes less is so much more. And in this case, 
I think it truly is. <clears throat> this is for my personal use. I like this enough. It matches my dish dishes and it goes nice. So I did this for me. There we go. And <clears throat> just a little bud vase. Uh, same technique, same style. You can still see that glassiness on there where it's sheen. So it's raw clay. There's nothing on this. I don't glaze that. The whole interior, of course, is glazed. Um, so it'll hold water and it's vitrified. And at cone six, which this was fired to, it is a uh, zero absorption rate. So you could do raw, pour coffee over this and it won't stain this beautiful, beautiful, bright white. It's a, it's a fabulous clay, um, but it's a love-hate relationship because of the fact that it's so difficult to throw and learn. And I'm not a good th thrower to begin with. I'm just learning. And uh, it's like throwing cream cheese. Yeah, just like cream cheese. But I love the finished effect. Um, these are my, I call these breakfast plates and I've been trying a new pattern. Um, I still don't have what I want. I, I can't even tell you how many of these stinking things I've made. I gotta find something I like and stick with it. Um, so far it's not it. It's okay, it's not a bad plate, just not the plate I was looking for. There we go. And then one last, let's get down there. Would you take that, Dan? And this. So this is a new series I've been working on. And what it is, is oysters. I think of this as an oyster. Looks like an oyster. So this is an oyster plate. And you can see I've done this rough design like um, around the edge of the plate so that that's how the seashell would be. And then on the exterior, I've done some texturing and I made a mold to make this. This, I made a mold that I make these from. And interior, the, um, this is interactive pigment with a satin over it. And you can see, so it's gone on the inside too. I think that looks really pretty. So this is the plate size. And if you have a plate and you have oysters, you gotta have a platter to put the oysters in. So as you can see, this is a good nine and a half inches. This is about 14. It's a pretty good size plate. Um, I don't know what the brown speckles are. I don't know where they came from or I maybe when I was doing, that's what it is. When I put, I put a little tiny, tiny line of magnesium around the outside because I wanted that brown look there along with the green. And when I did, I'll bet you little tiny specks got on the inside. And that, I believe, is magnesium. I also added little touches of blue here and there like the shell would be. So, and the exterior on this one came out pretty nice also. If you, oh, I like it darker like that. that, that I, I prefer that. So, here's the two plate and platter together. Um, that's a lot of clay, but I think it's going to look terrific filled with ice. So, and oysters on top. Not that you could use it for something, couldn't use it for something else. So that's really it. Um, like I said, it was a short kiln opening today. Um, I'm thinking about next time, maybe at the very end, or maybe even this time, we'll photograph each piece so that you can look at it individually at the end. It'll just go from one to the other and you don't have to see me moving it around. Um, let me know in the comments how you felt. Did I hold them longer? Is that better? Did you get to see more? Um, so that's it for today. Have a great day. Bye-bye.